I think that sounds really cool. It's one of the most interesting sounds I've ever heard. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a really great plugin from Arturia called Analog Lab. Analog Lab is a great plugin, it's super popular, and basically what it is is you get a ton of presets, over 8,000 from Arturia from their collection of analog synth emulations that they've put together over the years, and they've taken the greatest analog synths that have been used in top records, all these hit songs, and recreated them as plugins and Analog Lab has taken all of the presets that they've made for those plugins and put them into one collection. And it's a really cool way to go through a ton of sounds and find something really cool. So we're gonna be checking out the plugin. I'm gonna be going through the sounds, the UI, the usefulness. So, and then we're gonna be cooking up a beat with Analog Lab. So without any further ado, let's get into Ableton and get into the video. <laughs> So here uh, we have Analog Lab. If we take a look at the home menu here, we've got all of the different types of sounds that you can go through. And this is just gonna be sorting through the different presets. Uh, we can sort by instruments. They have, you know, all of the different synths that they're emulating here, or you can sort by sound banks or designers. The next tab here is the explore page. And this is where you're actually going to be going through all of the presets. And you can see we've got 7,700 presets. So that is is a insanely large amount and it's gonna be way too many to scroll through which is why it's really nice that they include uh, the different ways to sort by type instrument styles they have these characteristics that they've added on to um, to all the presets so we can search for things that have reverb on them and now we've got 2,000 uh, reverb presets nice um, and then on top of all of that, we've got these uh, eight knobs down here and some different sliders. And these are just going to tweak uh, different things about the presets. So we've got this brightness knob, if I turn that up. It's taking out some of that low end. And a lot of them have this timber knob, which does different things on different presets, but it's usually really cool. Uh, that's really cool. It sounds like we're kind of underwater or something. If we click on this edit preset right here, that's going to take us to this window where uh, we can see the different effects that have been added on. So this is not going to be stuff within the synth. This is going to be purely in Analog Lab. So you've got a delay and a reverb that you can add uh, right off the bat. And they actually have quite a few parameters on here you can mess around with. Um, and then you've got a pretty decent list of effects um, in here that you can add on. You definitely don't have as many options for effects as something like Expand, uh, but each of these individual effects has a lot more you can do with it. For example, if we look at this distortion, uh, we've got four different types. We've got a drive, an output gain, a dry wet. If you look at the flanger, we've got a uh, frequency, depth, feedback, and you don't get anything like that in expand. Um, so you've got these effects available to you. And then the other thing you can do to change the sound is if you have the V collection, you can go to the actual synth and hit open and go into the actual synthesizer and change everything. But yeah, I think that's enough about the user interface. It's really simple and that's one of the good things about this plugin is that you don't have to do too much work to get a really cool sound. Uh, one of the things I will say is that you definitely want to be going in and picking a specific type of sound that you want because if you just start scrolling through 7,000 presets, you're not really going to get what you want. Um, and a lot of times, if you just start scrolling through, you're going to find a factory presets. So they're just not going to have much going on. And you're also going to find a lot of sound effects and like weird things that are not going to be uh, instruments. Like, and don't get me wrong, I think that sounds super cool. But if I'm looking for like a lead sound to add or uh, chords for my melody, uh, I'm not going to go for that sound. So that's why you really want to be going in and picking a specific thing. So like if I want sound sound effects, of course, I can just go down here and be like, all right, I want some weird machine kind of bloopy noises. <laughs> The sound effects in here can be really cool and not something that I think a lot of people think about uh, with this plugin. For me, some of the better presets in this synth uh, for melodies are the bells, keys, leads, and string sounds. I think those lend themselves very well to these kind of old analog synthesizers. So let's go in uh, bells and we've got 120 presets to go through. So let's just give some of these a listen.
I always find myself getting distracted and just playing like whole musical ideas uh, based on any one of these presets. There's a lot of really cool stuff, but I want to try and stay focused. Uh, let's go through some of the uh, keys now, these synth keys. Um, and this sound right here is gonna bring me to my next point because I think that sounds really cool So I'm gonna go ahead and click this like button and uh, that like button is probably the best way to sort uh, your presets because even now that I've sorted it down to just classic synth keys, I still have 465 presets to go through, and that's more than most VSTs even have total. So if you start saving things in your liked uh, category, then that's gonna really narrow it down for you to only things that you like, and then you can go ahead and sort that even further to just keys or just electric piano. I don't even have any electric piano saved. One last thing to say is that, of course, the sound quality is gonna be top notch. Uh, this is Artorio we're talking about. They've like extensively modeled these analog synths and tried to get them as accurate as possible. Some of these presets have effects that uh, you might wanna take away and you can't. So like, what I mean is that, for example, we've got uh, uh, in the description for this preset here uh, that we've got a choir tape loop with EQ reverb and delay and usually what that means is that you're not actually going to be able to take away any of that reverb and delay if I turn down you know everything it's still gonna have that reverb and delay. And the only way to get rid of that would be to actually open the individual synth if you have the V collection. And if you don't, you're gonna have that reverb delay whether you want it or not. So just be aware that as you're saving these presets, you know, you kind of get what you get, but that's kind of the point. So yeah, that's kind of what I have to say about the sound of Analog Lab. So how useful is Analog Lab? Um, there's a couple things I wanna mention here. First of all, it's great for finding something new. You're gonna find a lot of sounds in Analog Lab that uh, you've never heard before, or maybe you have in like a record from the 80s, but never thought you'd be using in your own music. And that can be really cool. I love using weird sounds in my music because it means that I'm gonna have a unique song. In terms of ease of use for finding presets, you've got these categories, you can save presets. It's super easy to navigate so a plus there there's a ton of variety in these sounds and one thing that's cool is that a lot of the uh, factory presets for some of these analog synths they've recreated all of the actual factory presets that were on the real synths and they're usually like really simple and if you go through Artoria's presets there are usually going to be more complicated have some different effects and stuff going on so you can really get any type of sound in here and of course something I didn't even mention is that the software is integrated with uh Artoria's Keylab 61, which I have here, and Keylab 49. These are their MIDI keyboards, and I'll probably pull up a picture of one on screen so you guys can see, because uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can see it super well on the camera here, but they've got these knobs and faders that exactly correspond with these knobs and faders here in Analog Lab. And as I turn, you know, any of these knobs, it's gonna turn up and down. You can also uh, scroll through the presets with uh, this keyboard, which is really cool. I have arrows left and right I can go through, and I've got a big wheel. I can just scroll and uh, wait until I see something I like. The other thing about the Key Lab is that if you buy the Key Lab, it comes with Analog Lab. I mean, that I think is actually the best way to buy Analog Lab because it does cost $200, uh, and sometimes it will go on sale for $100, but that's pretty rare, and I haven't seen that for a long time. In my opinion, the best way to get it is if you buy the Key Lab Essential. Key Lab 49 costs $200. $30 key lab 61 cost 260 so it's sort of a no-brainer for me if you're looking to get analog lab get the keyboard you get analog lab plus a full-size keyboard that integrates very nicely with it has eight pads you can play drums and stuff on it but yeah that's pretty much my thoughts on analog lab with all that being said let's go ahead and cook up a beat with this so you guys can really hear what it can do I'm gonna start with uh, that synth preset that I just saved Add in some dark strings, see what we can get from there. Well, let's try and get a nice bass layer.
yeah so that's pretty much gonna do it for me today guys as always i will play you the full beat in just a second this was pretty different from my usual stuff uh we went totally into the edm house genre uh which i think sounded really cool with this loop um yeah but analog lab clearly a really cool plugin and you can do a lot with it uh for any genre but yeah as always i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one Clear. Clear.